Welcome to this presentation about Formula Student Electric Vehicles, in which I will discuss the Brake System Plausibility Device, BSPD, and how the Safety Critical Signals rules may apply. Although primarily intended for electric vehicles teams, this presentation could be of interest to combustion engine teams because the BSPD is applicable to both powertrains and is in the common section of the rules, section T. The presentation is intended for new teams, students or scrutineers that are familiarising themselves with the EV rules. This is not a how-to video, I'm not going to tell you how to design your car. I'm pointing out the key rules that you need to comply with and suggesting any pitfalls that you should avoid. First, a personal introduction. My name is Craig Powers. I'm a control systems engineer in the power generation industry. Motorsport is a hobby and I've got my own single seat racing car. I've been volunteering at Formula Student since 2003 in many roles, including in Germany and Russia, and I have been an EV scrutineer for the last six years. So let's look at the rules. Well, first of all, they're in section T, which means that they're applicable to both the EV and the combustion engine cars. The BSPD must be standalone and non-programmable. It will open the shutdown circuit if there is simultaneous hard braking and considerable power to the powertrain for more than 500 milliseconds. In the case of the electric vehicles, it's five kilowatts electrical power to the motors. And in case of the combustion engine cars, it's based upon throttle position. There are rules about the reset and latching. Once the shutdown circuit is opened, it must remain so until the low voltage is power cycled or the BSPD may reset itself if the condition, the fault condition, is no longer present for more than 10 seconds. Also, the BSPD must be supplied directly from the low voltage power. Standalone is defined in the rules. The BSPD should have its own printed circuit board with no other functionality on it. It should be a simple and minimal design which is easy to explain and easy to review by the scrutineer. There should be no programmable devices whatsoever and all power and sensors should be direct to and from the PCB. And my interpretation is that it should be as independent as possible. To detect hard braking, you must use a pressure sensor. It's my interpretation that this can be an analog sensor or a pressure switch, but I stress that that is my interpretation. The threshold must be set to be lower than that which locks the wheels. As regards measuring power, you actually measure current. You measure the DC current to the inverter or motor controller. You need to calculate an equivalent of five kilowatts and you should perform your calculations at the maximum tractive system voltage so that your calculations are on the cautious side. The BSPD is a safety critical system, so please read the rules at T11.9 about that and fully understand the implications. For EV teams, they must prove the BSPD during scrutineering or technical inspection. And you can do that by an appropriate signal that represents the current in order to simulate five kilowatts of power. Because of course, the car won't actually be moving. It will be jacked up on stands with the wheels off. So you won't actually be able to develop significant power during scrutineering. You must simulate it. Note also the BSPD must not be inside the accumulator. To understand the purpose of the BSPD, let's look at a typical powertrain. This one has got two accelerator pedal position sensors feeding to an ECU, which sets the torque demand to an inverter or motor controller, which converts DC power to an AC supply to the drive motor. The BSPD can be a mitigation for an ECU fault. So if the ECU fails, either hardware or software, or the torque demand output to the motor controller is frozen, then the BSPD can act and open the shutdown circuit. An alternative mitigation 
is for a motor controller or inverter fault. So if the motor controller fails, either hardware or software, and there is uncommanded power to the drive motor, then the BSPD can act and open the shutdown circuit. You can see that we measure the DC current to the inverter or motor controller. I want to make sure that you don't get confused between the BSPD and the app's brake plausibility. They are quite different. The app's brake plausibility has its own rules, EV 2.3, but they have very similar wording. There's also five kilowatt mentioned and hard braking and 500 milliseconds of time. But this function allows you to set the motor torque to zero. So that means that it can be a software function, for example, in the ECU, and there is no need to open the shutdown circuit. So make sure that you implement both of these functions within an EV car. This is made slightly more difficult because the ESF template doesn't have an obvious placeholder for the app's brake plausibility, but please make sure you include it in your FMEA and ESF documentation. The app's brake plausibility is a mitigation against a stuck throttle pedal or a similar fault. It will set the torque demand to zero, so it relies on a fully functioning ECU and inverter or motor controller. Note that the app's brake plausibility does not need to operate the shutdown circuit. So let's remind ourselves what the rules say about BSPD measurements. We must measure the power, or the equivalent of, and it's got to be the equivalent of five kilowatts using a DC current sensor so we're measuring between the accumulator and the inverter or motor controller. Several methods are available to measure current and they include Hall effect, magnetic flux measurements and low precision shunts relying on Ohm's law. So these measurements can either be direct or non-contact. And what I mean by non-contact is a sensor which is in proximity to the conductor or perhaps a toroidal arrangement wrapping round the conductor. We must also measure the braking effort and we have to measure brake system pressure. We cannot use a potentiometer or switch on the pedal itself, it must be pressure. There are several ways of measuring pressure. You can use an analog pressure transducer or you can use a pressure switch which will have a volt free contact and then you can condition that using pull up or pull down resistors to feed into an input circuit. Whichever transmitter or pressure switch you use, make sure it's fit for purpose, that it's designed for brake fluids and has an appropriate pressure rating. Whilst I don't want to steer your design towards a particular solution, we often see operational amplifiers used as comparators and Schmidt triggers. We see logic gates to combine the brake and the power signals. We see various transistor switches and timers. And typically we have a relay output, a volt-free contact, which goes into the shutdown circuit. So as we've seen, the BSPD is quite a simple device. However, it's got to be safety critical and T11.9 tells us this because it says that anything that acts into the shutdown circuit has to be safety critical and the BSPD is such a system and the SCS rules tell us what sort of signal failures we have to deal with. We have to deal with open circuit failures, short circuit to ground or short circuit to supply voltage in addition, we also have to make it safety critical if there's a power loss to the BSPD circuit. For example, the fuse fails or perhaps a wire breaks or you lose a ground connection to the, for the supply voltage. And the SCS rules tell us what safe state means. And for the BSPD, we have to open the shutdown circuit, which opens the AIRs. So the rules tell us that the BSPD should operate if we get simultaneous hard braking and greater than five kilowatts of power 
for more than 500 milliseconds and if so we should open the shutdown circuit and open the AIRs. So obviously it's an AND logic gate. If we can design the brake system input circuit so that the BSPD thinks that the brakes are pressed when the signal fails, then we have a fail-safe design. As soon as the car is under power, and the power is greater than 5 kilowatts, then the system will go into fault mode, and the BSPD will shut down the car by opening the AIRs. Likewise, if we can arrange that the power measurement circuit appears to be greater than 5 kilowatts if the signal fails, again, that will represent a fail-safe design because the BSPD will shut down the car when the brakes are pressed. I'm not going to design the BSPD for you, but here is a typical arrangement and representation. We've got a current sensor representing the power and we've got some form of brake pressure sensor, and we've got some input conditioning circuits and perhaps some comparators, which feeds some combinational logic, and there's a reset and a latch within that, and it goes to perhaps a volt-free contact, which is part of the shutdown circuit chain. So it's important to remember those SCS rules. We've got to be able to cope with a variety of signal failures we need to cope with open circuit faults. We need to cope with the sensor being dragged down to zero volts or up to the power supply voltage. And that is exceptionally difficult with a simple comparator, which may be looking for a high voltage or a low voltage. So this is not easy at all to do. There is another way of dealing with safety critical signals using signal validation. I covered this in more detail in a separate video about the accelerator pedal position sensors or apps. So you can look for that separate video. Now, I've borrowed this slide from that video and therefore I've shown the sensor circuit as a resistor just for illustration purposes. But in reality, uh, this would be your pressure sensor or your power measurement with some sort of signal conditioning arrangement. If you can arrange your measurement so that the valid range is inboard of the naught volts and the supply line. So let's say that you've got a naught to five volt supply line for your sensors, and you can perhaps arrange for your the valid range to be between one and four volts. Then you've got a means of detecting if the signal is out of range and you can detect um, you can detect an open circuit fault or you can detect um, a signal being dragged up to the power supply lines or down to zero volts. So you can see that you can use voltage threshold checks as a means of signal validation. So if you can use signal validation to check for out of range input sensors, then you can use that signal fail flag as part of your combinational logic to create a safety critical response so that the BSPD will trigger. The BSPD truth table then looks like this. If you get a faulty signal, then it doesn't matter about the other signal because the BSPD will immediately shut down the car. And that is true of either input. So we've seen that the BSPD is quite a simple circuit, but it is made more complex by the safety critical signals rules. So what should we do as a minimum? Well, open circuit faults are probably the most likely failure mode where an entire cable is severed or a connector becomes loose. Now, open circuit faults are very easily tested by disconnecting a sensor cable. And I know that Formula Student Germany do test that the BSPD has a safety critical design by disconnecting sensors. So the most common mistake we see is not following the safety critical signals rules at all. We've seen that there's a minimum requirement 
of detecting open circuit signal faults because that is checked at Formula Student Germany. And you may find that other competitions start to police the SCS rules more robustly. Also, teams fail to make the BSPD a fail-safe design for power failure. The output relay should be a normally open contact into the shutdown circuit. The BSPD is a very, very important line of last resort if you have uncommanded power. You will hit the brakes instinctively. Therefore, I would urge you to make the BSPD as independent as possible. You should ensure that the sensors are not routed through other systems. You should also make sure that you do not combine the BSPD with other systems such as the IMD. We often see combined latch and reset circuits and sometimes a combined output contact to the shutdown circuit. Remember that every protective device must have its own output stage. And finally, many teams arrive at scrutineering without a means of simulating five kilowatts of power. So make sure you do that and make sure you have all of the equipment with you and you know how to implement that test and do it swiftly so that you save time at scrutineering. So finally, understand the safety critical signals rules. This is an advanced topic and make sure that you analyze your BSP design for the most credible failure modes. And explain your BSPD well in the documentation, the FMEA and ESF. It will help the scrutineers to review your design. If you are attending the UK competition, then read the Formula Student UK supplementary rules. The UK rules require you to perform a comprehensive analysis of your system using an FMEA. Do this. It will help inform and refine your design. So in summary, we've discussed the BSPD rules and how the safety critical signals rules add significantly to the complexity of the design. We've discussed likely failure modes of input circuits and we've discussed the bare minimum requirements that you will need to pass scrutineering, particularly at Formula Student Germany. We've discussed techniques such as fail-safe input signal design and signal validation to help detect signal failures in order that you can comply with the SCS rules. We've explained the difference between the app's brake plausibility and the BSPD, and we've highlighted some common mistakes that teams make. I would like to stress that this is my own work. It's not official or sanctioned by any of the Formula Student or SAE organisations or competitions. I've provided my email address and would welcome any feedback or discussion, but I cannot answer any specific questions about your car and its entry to a Formula Student or SAE competition. I cannot answer any eligibility questions. So, I would urge you to use the formal mechanism, which in the case of the UK is the Formula Student Question Database. Thank you very much.